All right, today we're going to take a look at a Selbip speaking answer that was sent to me by one of my subscribers, one of you guys. Okay, so this woman is trying to get uh, level nine. Okay, and, and the question is, give your friend some advice on buying a laptop. Okay, give your friend some advice on buying a laptop. Okay, so right now we're going to listen to her answer, and then I'm going to give some feedback, some, some tips on how I think for sure she could get nine. Okay, so let's take a listen to it right now. Hi Sam, I hope you are doing great and it's good to know that you are planning to buy a new laptop for your higher studies. Well, I would suggest you to have a look at the Dell website because I'm a big fan of Dell laptops. I guess it's around 13 years that I'm stick to the same brand. It's just because of the service, the customer service support they have and even they have a lot of features so i know i really like dell and that's the reason i suggest everyone to have a look at their website see their offers and the other thing that you could do is to see the reviews of a new generation laptop from different brands like lenovo or maybe it's hp that could help you to figure out uh, which one do you need Anyway, if you need some more help, let me know. I'm always available for you. Take care. Bye. Okay, that was great. What did you think? You think she'll get uh, a nine or do you think she needs to do some things, change a few things to get up to a nine? What's your, what are your thoughts on it? You know, when I hear her speaking English, I think it's great. She's, she's not going to have any problems living in Canada or working in Canada or, or making friends. Right, just very, very good English. Okay, so so really no problems in her English. Now, remember in my in my recent videos, I've been saying that when you go into the CELPIP exam, you need to prove yourself to them that your English is a certain level. Okay, so if, if you want to get nine, you have to you have to prove to them that your your English is a nine. Okay, and you, you have a very limited a very limited opportunity to prove that to them. Okay, I mean, if you're if you're answering a question, let's say it's 60 seconds, right? You only have 60 seconds to prove to the CELPA people that your English is is at a certain level. So when you see a question like this, give your friend some advice on buying a laptop. Okay, you're you should not be thinking, uh, what kind of good advice can I give my friend? Uh, what kind of like good laptops or no you shouldn't you shouldn't be thinking about laptops okay you should be thinking about what English do I need to use when talking about this topic to convince the CELPI people that my English is awesome okay so you should not be thinking about <laughs> the technology yes this question is asking about you know technology but you know if you give bad advice for example if your answer is, is bad advice, you know what? I don't think the CELPIP people are going to take any, any marks away. You know, yes, you should, you should try to try your best to, to answer the question, you know, try to give it good advice. But, you know, this is not a technology exam. This is an English exam. Okay, so, so your focus should be on English. So when you're preparing, you know, you, you have a piece of paper and a pencil in front of you, you know, you have a few seconds to, to think about it. So when you're preparing, write down some words that, you know, how, how you're going to answer the question. You should be thinking about what kind of English, what kind of words and phrases that you're going to use to convince them, right? Because you have, you have to convince them, right? So if you spend all your time talking about laptops and, and just technology-related stuff, but not really English related stuff, you know, you're, you're not going to get as good a score. So in this, in this, uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to, I'm going to give you some, some words and phrases that you could use here to talk about technology that would, uh, that, that would sort of probably give you a, a better score, you know, like phrasal verbs or idioms or those kinds of things that I've been talking about in my recent videos, right? You need to use those things to get a nine or higher. Now, as a side note, I just wanted to, to mention that that task one on the CELPIP exam is giving advice. Okay, and now that's one of the ones that's for 90 seconds. Okay, most of most of the speaking 
answers are 60 seconds, but, but this one is 90 seconds. Now, the file that the woman sent me was about 60 seconds. Okay, so I'm not sure if maybe she just forgot that, that this one is, is 90 seconds. If you have 90 seconds to speak, you should try to try to speak for the full 90 seconds. Okay, that way, you know, that way you can convince those people that, that your English is awesome. Okay, so that's just a side note. So when you're taking notes, okay, I would suggest writing down two or three words on the piece of paper. That way you don't forget what you're going to talk about. Okay, so for me, if I were answering this question, I would, I would, uh, you know, I would, I would write down Apple. I'm going to recommend Apple computers, right? I own, you know, my MacBook Pro, right? So I know more about Apple. This woman talked about Dell. She probably knows more about Dell. That's great. Okay, so just, just talk about what, whatever you know most about, whatever is most, most comfortable, most familiar for you. Okay, so I would write down Apple, and then I, I might write down the word warranty. You know, maybe that's another aspect that I want to talk about. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Try to convince. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell Sam that I. My recommendation is to is to go with a MacBook, okay. And and one of those reasons I might give is because of the, the warranty. Maybe I had a good a good experience with with Apple's warranty or something, okay. So I'm just gonna write down those words, and then I'm gonna try to think about words or phrases that I can use to talk about technology or or that I can use in my answer that will that will be a little bit higher level than just normal talking. So one of those words or phrases that you could use is is to conk out. Okay, conk out. Have you heard that before? Okay, you can use that to talk about technology uh, and that means that when, when technology stops working, it it conks out. Okay, you can say uh you can say, you know, Sam, you know, a few years back I went through a phase where, you know, I was always using Windows PC, Windows, Windows laptops, and uh, they just kept conking out. You know, I would buy one and it would conk out, and then I'd buy another one and it would conk out as well. Okay, so, so conk out means to, uh, you know, to uh, just to sort of die. Okay, now another one, you, you could say bite the dust. Okay, if, if something, a technology or anything that stops working, you could say bite the dust. Okay, so you could say, you know, I had really bad experiences with, with, with Windows laptops. They just kept biting the dust. You know, I wasted a lot of money because every, every time I bought a laptop, it bit the dust or it conked out. Okay, that's why I decided to save up a bit of money and, and buy a MacBook Pro. Okay, now I, I mentioned the phrase, uh, I went through a phase. Okay, I went through a phase. That means that, you know, there was a time in your life where you did something a certain way, right? You could say, you know, a few years back, I went through a phase where I, I didn't eat breakfast, right? I, I, I wasn't eating breakfast. I stopped eating breakfast, you know, and, uh, but then, you know, that phase ended and now I'm eating breakfast again. Okay. So a phase, if you, if you say you, you went through a phase or you're going through a phase right now, then, uh, you know, you, that's what it means. It's just a period of your life where where you're doing something a certain way. You know, you could say right now I'm in a phase where I'm drinking Pepsi with uh, with with every meal. You know, eat breakfast, drink Pepsi. You know, eat lunch, <laughs> drink Pepsi. Whatever. You guys get the the idea of this uh, this phrase, right? You're going through a phase. Because you could you could use a phrase like that even if it's even if it's not related to technology, right? Just because you're talking about technology doesn't mean your idioms and you know phrasal verbs and everything it doesn't mean they have to be about technology. It could be about anything, right? The point is you're trying to convince the Selpa people that your your English is good. They don't really care. I think those people, they might have like a checklist in front of them, and they just need to hear certain things. Okay, so we talked about going through a phase. Now the next one is on the pricey side. Okay, if something is on the pricey side. That means it's 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 a bit expensive. Okay, so you could use that phrase. Okay, I could say, yeah, Apple, you know, Apple products are a bit on the pricey side. Yeah, but you know, in my experience, it's worth it. It's worth it to spend a little bit more, um, you know, than if you're just always always buying like cheap laptops. Okay, so you could use that phrase, a bit on the pricey side. Uh, now another one is throw in the towel. Throw in the towel. If you throw in the towel, that means you give up on something. Okay, so if I were answering this question, you know, I would tell Sam, 
you know, I, you know, I went through a phase where, you know, I was always buying Windows laptops and they kept conking out. So I just decided to throw in the towel on, on Windows laptops altogether. I decided to throw in the towel. Okay, that means I, I just gave up on Windows laptops and I decided to, to buy a Mac. So even though Macs are a bit on the pricey side, you know, they're worth it. Okay, so that's what I would say about that. And then, I, you know, you could talk about the warranty. You could say, you know, Sam, I, another reason I would recommend going with, with Apple products is because, you know, I've had really good experiences with their warranty. You know, when I bought my first MacBook Pro, uh, right after, a few weeks after I bought it, I spilled coffee on the, on the computer and it just fried it. You know, the, the, the whole computer just just got fried fried okay do you know what fried means that's a it's a, a word you could use to talk about you know electronic devices if you spill liquid on an electronic device and it stops working then it it, it fries or it gets fried right so you could say yeah I, you know i fried my brand new macbook pro and uh I called i called up apple support and uh they it was great they they replaced my my uh my my unit unit means like a whatever laptop or cell phone or whatever so they replaced my macbook pro you know free of charge and uh, i got so lucky because i had i had bought their extended warranty called apple care and so you know i would recommend going with with uh with an apple computer i'd, I'd recommend going with with apple care their their warranty and uh you know just that way it'll give you some peace of mind because you could you could use that you could say it'll give you some peace of mind peace of mind is a phrase that just means it just means it'll help you relax right if you have a good warranty on your products you can just relax knowing if something happens to them you're not going to lose all your money right They're, the the company is going to replace them right so you can say you know i just called up dell and uh they really helped me a lot in my in in replacing my thing so that's why i would highly recommend going with dell or that's why i'd re highly recommend going with whatever brand you want to choose okay so those are some those are some words that you can use that I think will help you get a nine, right? So I think that the reason the reason people don't get nine, or the reason people don't get whatever the whatever score you're trying to get, the reason you can't get it is because maybe you're focused on answering the questions instead of thinking about the English you need to use. Okay, so <laughs> this, is, this is important. It's important to remember this is an English exam, so try to think about words and phrases that you can use, and not so much good advice about technology. Okay, so, that, so that's my advice for this question. Hope you guys find that helpful. If you want more lessons like this, me reviewing people's people's answers, then let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy to uh, happy to help you guys out in this way. I hope, uh, hope the exam is a breeze for you. A breeze means easy. Hope it's a breeze when you take the self-up exam. Anyway, hope you guys are having a great day wherever you are. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and for always smashing like and subscribing and commenting. I really appreciate your guys' help and uh, have a great day and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. <laughs> Take care.